Jesus. Come on, let's just praise him. out and touch him. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here right now, God. Lord, we felt your presence here all afternoon, God. We know, Lord, you're in this place right now, God. Lord, we just want to lift up holy hands in the temple without wrath and doubting, God. Lord, we love you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, my God. Lord, I magnify your name. I magnify you, oh God. You are worthy, oh Lord. God, I love you, oh God, I praise your name, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, my God, I love magnify him. We really need to worship him tonight. His presence is here right now. My God, Lord, I glorify. Lord, I lift up the name of Jesus. I thank you for your presence. It's already in the house, God. Lord, I worship you. I thank you for what you're going to do in this service tonight, God. Lord, speak to us and speak through us, God. Lord, we ask you, God, to help us tonight, God. Lord, to be sensitive to your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What a God we serve. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. The song said, angels bow before him, and heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Aren't you glad we do? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. By way of announcements, before we get too far into this, Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary to brother and sister Wally. And sister Wally, happy birthday tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll, get, we'll take care of y'all after service, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. There will be no prayer here tomorrow night. Please pray at home. One hour, if possible. And Thursday night, men's jail service. Everybody say, men's jail service. And women. And women. Don't say no women on there, but I guess that men and women shall service at 6.45 p.m. Please take a mask with you. You may need it. We don't know that yet, but you might. So just take one week just in case, okay? Hallelujah. Friday, happy birthday, Brother Andrew Driscoll. We'll take care of your business tonight, too. And then Saturday, happy birthday, Sister Laura. Woo. Lord, everybody's got birthdays this week except me. Amen. All right. Well, we're glad everybody's got birthdays and anniversaries this week. Amen. So we just get them all at one time. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's take the prayer request. Let's pray for Grandpa's brother who's got COVID and uh, needs prayer. Amen. God needs to heal him. Sister Driscoll. Let's both request. Uh, and Eliana is sick tonight and then our daughter is going to have surgery. Did he get to have yes. it yet? Yes. Yes. And also... Also, your stepbrother is, is uh, got, we just found out this week he's got cancer and doesn't have very long to live. So we want to take him to the Lord. Any other requests? Sister? My family, uh, the ministry, of course, and also the Mendoza family, they got COVID, and okay. uh, they also got grandpa's last and right. uh, the, the uh, Ochoa's. Yes. Amen. Our nation. Yes, our nation and the mess we're in. Amen. Grandpa Ocha, amen. Also had a nephew to die. Let's pray for the family. Amen. Any others? Sister? All right. Your aunt? Well, they, let's just take all these to the Lord. Let's just ask the Lord to bless this service tonight. God, we thank you. 
For loving us, God, you know all the prayer requests. God, there's too numerous for me to say. But God, I'm asking you right now that you would move right in the midst of us, Lord. God, your, your spirit's everywhere. God, you will touch no matter how far, how near, God. Lord, I believe in you right now that you're going to move upon every request you're going to answer, Lord. God, those that need healing, that you would give them healing, oh God. Lord, raise them up off the bed of affliction. God, we ask you to touch those, Lord, that are in sorrow, that are hurting right now, God. Lord, that you would comfort their hearts, God. I'm asking you that you would move in our nation, God. Lord, that you would help our nation, God, to pull back together, Lord. God, I'm asking you that you would move in the midst of this service tonight. God, allow your spirit to work its work here, God. Lord, we need you to move, God. We ask you to help us all to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost tonight in this place. God, we'll give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand clap of praise right now. We love you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We magnify you, oh God. We glorify your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. We are so glad to have the Wileys back and the Coronas back. Amen. And any of you other ones that were thinking about missing being back in your head here. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, we want to move right on into the service. So we're going to ask Brother Joshua if he would to come and receive our offering. Jesus, thank you for the privilege we have to give to you tonight, to give to your work. God, I'm asking you to bless it and anoint it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring your offering unto the Lord. Don't everybody run over each other trying to get here, okay? Hallelujah.
Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, tell him, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Wiley, if you would, go ahead and pass those out. Amen. We are continuing with our lesson on the way of an eagle. Hallelujah. Amen. We got everybody a notebook tonight. If you would, when you get your notebook, you can either write your name on the front page, the fly leaf, first page, whatever you want to call it. Amen. Just write your name at the top of it so we'll know whose it is. And by the next week, I'll have your name on the outside so they'll know who to pass it out to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my. It's, this is a powerful, powerful lesson tonight. I, I want you to understand... Uh, there's several of us have been being fought since this revival started. Amen. Amen. If you haven't, maybe you need to find an altar and pray through. Because that's why that's probably why you're not being fought. Because you're not really getting in the devil's way. Amen. Or hindering his work. Amen. Now I know that sounds a little crazy, but that's the truth. Amen. I've been in this fifty some odd years and I can promise you. I've been in his way a lot. Amen. Amen. I've been hit from every angle. Uh, he's, he's attacked me from every side that he could attack me from. Amen. And uh, you know what? He don't get no glory for that because I've got a God that stands up. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And when God stands up, it's all over. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to get in our mind that Satan... The devil and all of his cohorts are created beings. They are not gods. They want you to think they are. So, you know, and they, they want you to be afraid of them little things. And I, you know what? They're jerks. They're a big joke. Hey Amen. They're a big joke. Ephesians chapter 6. And I know you're thinking I'm going to be preaching on this tonight or teaching on this tonight, but it ain't going to exactly be that way. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Pay attention to that. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. You hear that? Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. Everybody say all. all. Of the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. How? In the spirit. Can I tell you, when you just come in here and mumble a prayer of some sort, amen. You really haven't done anything. All you've done is wasted your breath. Until you can get to the place where you are praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Look what it says. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. He said you need to pray with all your prayers and the supplication in the Spirit. Amen. All right. Watching there to, unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. All right. Let's go on. One day there was an airman by the name of Chuck Yeager. Now he's still alive. And he strapped on his helmet knowing he was going to do something no man had ever done. He was about to break the sound barrier. Many young pilots had lost their lives trying to break this invisible force that resisted them. A pilot would meet the sound barrier when his plane would fly at great speed until the air in front of the plane would build up with such a force against the cockpit, wings, and nose that the pressure would be almost unbearable. Many times, planes would vibrate and eventually disintegrate, or the pilots would pass out from the pressure 
and will lose their lives. On this day, Chuck Yeager determined he was going to break the sound barrier. As he climbed into the sky, he knew what was waiting for him, the invisible force, that invisible resistance. He said that when, when he thought he could no longer take the pressure, when he thought his plane would be destroyed and disintegrate, just when he thought he could take no more, he heard a loud boom, and then everything was quiet. Everything was peaceful around him. It took him a few seconds to gather his thoughts, and then it dawned on him what had happened. He had broken the sound barrier. And the invisible force that had been resisting him was now behind him, pushing him as he moved on to greater dimensions of speed. When you are face to face with the devil, the spiritual strong in your home or life, and your spirit is facing the spiritual dimension and power that tries to come against you, head straight into the turmoil. Hallelujah. Boy, I didn't hear any amens on that one. Amen. One amen. Thank you, Sister West. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So when everything is going wrong and the devil's coming against you with all of his might, what do you do? Turn and run? No. You stand. Hallelujah. Amen. You hold your ground and you move forward in the spirit. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Too many times it's fear that stops us from soaring like the eagle. Amen. Amen. We talked about how the eagle gets up and he, he begins to ride thermals. And Brother Andrew had a, a picture here a while ago. He could put it up there right quick if he wanted to. It was a little clip of, a, of a, somebody had strapped a, a GoPro camera to the back of an eagle, and he flies. I've seen this before, and he flies, and he soars, and he sails, and, and we don't really catch it, amen. We see the eagle up there flying around, amen, but when you see it from his eye view, hallelujah, amen, he's above everything, amen. While he's up there, it's carefree, amen, because... There's nothing can harm him up there. Yes, Amen. He's out of the way of everything that could cause him problems. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. An eagle don't have to worry about an engine going out. Go. Amen. No burnout on his engines. Hallelujah. And this is what God wants for us in the spirit. Amen. Is for us to be able to soar. You remember the end of the last lesson. I talked about coming home one evening and my wife thought there were some hawks above her chicken pens and so she was ready to get the gun after them. I thought you can't kill predators. That's I mean, you know, you can't just can't do that. Not not us. That's an illegal thing to do. Amen. Especially in the city limits. They might hear that gun. Hallelujah. Amen. But but it wasn't at hawks at all. When I got out of the car, I thought that's not a hawk. His shape is different. He's got a thicker wingspan than a hawk does and and they're wider wingspan than a hawk's got. And so I, I got out of the car quickly and I got as quick as I could, stared up into the, into the heavens and there he was. And I just got a brief glimpse of him. It was a bald eagle and he was circling and he was going up. And, and by the time I saw him, I could tell there was three more up above him and they were at different levels and they were riding a thermal. They were just holding their wings out. Nobody was flapping. They were just moving the tips of their wing feathers and, and just riding that thermal and going and around in circles and following that up into the sky. Amen. They were getting uh, a place where they were above everything that could possibly harm them. Uh, they didn't have too much to worry about my wife anyway because she's not that good a shot. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God had not given us the fear of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Too many times that fear is what stops us. Yeah. It's the hindrance in our world. Amen. Now, you know, we, we, we start to go somewhere in the Holy Ghost and fear grips us. Amen. Anybody ever woke up in the middle, middle of the night with night sweats? Yeah. Ever woke up in the middle of the night with, with fear in your heart? 
Hallelujah. Amen. You dreamed something was going bump in the night. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I tell you what's even even more uh, rattling. I like my wife and I. We were in bed one night years ago, and uh, our, we lived in a house out of Each Hall, Texas, there, and on 103 East, and and we were there, and we were in one end of the house, and the kids were all in the other. And about three o'clock in the morning, I woke wide awake, and on the end of the bed. Amen. Well, first off, I felt like our, the air conditioner was been going down, 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 and it was like 26 degrees instead of the 65 that was set on. That's what it felt like. You know, y'all ever felt that? You ever experienced that? I sat up, and hit, there he was on the end of my bed, standing there about that tall. Amen. They, ain't, they don't get very big. And uh, a little skunk was sitting in there looking at me. And about that time, my wife sat up, and she goes, what is that? I said, it's a spirit. And I jumped up and began to run after it. And I chased it through the house and it went out a window and we, we prayed over the house. The next day we anointed everything and prayed over it and never had any more problems out of it. Amen. But but I wasn't afraid. There was no fear there. Amen. The time that I came into the man in the restaurant in Galveston, uh, there was no fear there. Amen. He, he was threatening me and, and told me what he was fixing to do to my body. And he's coming towards me. He's running towards me. And he's screaming at the top of his lungs at me. And all I said was Jesus. Just Jesus is all I said. And he stopped like he hit a brick wall. You know why there was no fear there? You know why there was no fear? Because the Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. Hey, one plus God is a majority. I win. I win. Amen. If I'm that majority with him, I win. Hallelujah. If he is my partner in crime, hallelujah. I don't want to say that that way. That's not good. Amen. If he is my partner in killing devils, then we're, we're pretty good partners. Amen. Amen. Because I can trust him. He will, he will step in and the fear leaves. Amen. All right. Look what verse 12 tells us in our text. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay, we're not we're not really wrestling against uh, a, a tangible thing. Amen. If you you can see demons and that you know they're not really flesh and blood though they they're there and, and they do make themselves visible sometimes but they're in the spirit world. You got to understand they're in a different realm for us from us. Amen. So when you see one, all you're seeing is a spirit. Amen. That has transformed himself. And, and we don't really wrestle them like that. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Amen. When, when Paul said this, he was talking about the Greek wrestlers. Amen. Because the Greeks would have these wrestling matches and, and they would wrestle till one of them finally pinned the other. And, and I guess that's where wrestling started. I don't know. They didn't have what we got nowadays, obviously. Amen. And thank God they didn't. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, but against, look at this, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In 1 Corinthians, Paul wrote this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. That way of escape is not around the situation, but rather it's straight through the situation. If God, remember that I was saying, if God brings you to it, he'll take you through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So God has given us the tools we need for spiritual warfare. In verse 11 of the text, Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that may, you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, when we talk about the wiles of the devil, we're talking about those clever schemes that are used by Satan to ensnare us through temptation, through threat, or intimidation. What kind of schemes does he have? Well, he's got a whole book of schemes, amen? He's got a box load of them. And, but some of the major ones that he uses, and especially uh, in people in the church, Amen. When young, young folks just coming into church, had not had the Holy Ghost long, they're, they're new in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He likes to do them like he did Eve and Adam. 
Amen. He likes to challenge God's word. Genesis chapter 3 gives us the detailed look into his tactic. Look at this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the trees of the of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Look at the serpent. He says unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Amen. For God know, doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. You shall be what? As God's. Knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and for a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, by suggestion that we should re-examine the clear teaching of God's word, Satan invites us to add our own interpretation, which therefore makes God's word of none effect. Amen. All right, entire church denominations are falling prey to these wiles of the devil. For instance, Many have changed their stance on homosexuality. Some are even ordaining homosexual preachers and priests. This is an abomination in God's eyes. Hallelujah. But God says that we can put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you got a God today? Amen. That has an armor for you. Hallelujah. God, God does not just throw us out on the battlefield and expect us, amen, to fight on our own. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, David walks out on the battlefield and he's a little lad and, and nobody else wants to go out there and fight this 11 foot tall bozo. And so he steps out there with his little sling and his little rock and said, I got this. Hallelujah. But then when he got, now look at this, I want you to watch, okay? This huge giant is standing there and he's bellowing out threats and he's he's cursing God and he's cursing David and he's he's doing all these things and, and he's making threats and he's going to feed him to the fowls of the air and to the animals on the ground, all this good stuff. And David said, Keep threatening me, bud. <laughs> it ain't me that's gonna be fed to the to the varmints. You you're gonna be coon baked tonight. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so I, I want you to notice, David did not just stand his ground. He ran away from the giant. No, he ran towards the giant. And, and he put a stone in his sling. And he said, you come to me with sword and shield and spear. And all I got is a stone and it's coming to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Amen. I'm telling you that one plus God majority thing works. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he didn't have the armor of Saul on. Saul had tried to put his armor on him. David had the armor of God on him. Amen. Hallelujah. There was no fear there. When he went in to talk to Saul and, and Saul said, look, uh, you need to put my armor on, son. You can't go out there. You're a kid. You've not got any training. That man's been in the in the battlefield for years and years and years and years. David said, hey, I slew a bear and a lion once. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't imagine Saul had much to say about that because I imagine Saul had never slew a bear or a lion. Amen. Right. And, 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 and the thing was, amen, David was a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. God had already picked him, even though he hadn't been anointed as yet. God had already put his finger on David and said, this is the king that's going to be my next king. Amen. This guy here has got it together because the thing he does first is love the Lord with all of his heart, his soul, his mind, and his strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything that David does revolves around me. Not around David, around God. Amen. And so God is saying because of that, I've got my armor on him. No, he didn't 
old clink, clink, clunk as he walked on the battlefield. He didn't have that kind of armor on. Hallelujah. In fact, all he had on was a shepherd's garment. Just a shepherd's garment. Hallelujah. That's all he needed in a bag of rocks. Amen. A shepherd's garment, a bag of rocks, and the name of the Lord. Woo! <laughs> what a combination. Amen. So that was all the armor he had to have. Notice what happens when we armor up with God's armor, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're not to go around, but rather, stand, but rather go straight through the storm created by the spirit world. With God's armor, we can take a stand against Satan's schemes and his temptations. Amen. Number two, he's challenging our identity. That's, that's the second thing that he does is he challenges our identity. Do you know who you really are? Well, do you? All right. When you go into the baptismal in the name of Jesus, you take on his name. Hallelujah. And when you take on his name, amen, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. So you're his child. You're walking in his name. Amen. So instead of being Elizabeth Valdez now, it's Elizabeth Valdez Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and instead of being, uh, you know, Jason Wiley, now it's Jason Wiley Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it, it, it's it's a Sheila Driscoll Jesus. It's, it's Joe Driscoll Jesus. Amen. You understand that when you take on his name, hallelujah. All right. You know, armor is usually on the outside. But the armor, when you take on the name of Jesus in baptism and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with another tongue, amen, when you do that, you get power. Where's the power at? It's on the inside. Hallelujah. If this same spirit dwell in you that dwell in Christ Jesus, it's going one day quicken your mortal body. Hallelujah. It's going to turn you into a new creature, but then later on, amen, you're going to take on a new body. Hallelujah. You'll be a new person in the Holy Ghost. You'll change. The Bible said we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Now, beloved, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when Christ shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. Uh, we don't know what we're going to be, but we know there's going to be a transformation. Hallelujah. There's going to be a change. Amen. And this mortal will put on immortality. Now, in Luke chapter 4, 1 through 13, we're given insight into several of the devil's wiles. Satan came against Jesus to tempt him in the wilderness. Now, if you go back and read those scriptures, amen, you'll, you'll see this is the temptation of Jesus. He's fasted 40 days, and of course the enemy comes to him at the end of 40 days, and, and he says, uh, if you will, if you're hungry, I know you've got to be hungry after 40 days of fasting, make these stones into bread. <laughs> you think he couldn't have done it? He could have done it in a heartbeat. Why didn't he? Because he ain't about to listen to no devil. He ain't about to obey no devil. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he could go another 40 days without ever turning anything into bread. Amen. But he wanted to make a point to the devil. I don't listen to you. I don't follow your instructions. And, and he was making a, a guidebook for us to follow. Amen. That we don't need to listen to any devil. We don't have to follow his ways and his, his means and his instructions. Amen. We just need to follow the Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Follow his spirit. Now I want you to look what happens here. So Satan comes to Jesus to tempt him in the wilderness. Now he's already come with the bread thing. And on two different occasions in these scriptures, Satan begins his temptations with these words. If you are the son of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you, Satan already knew who Jesus was? 
Now look at, look, at, look at the scripture. Mark chapter 1 verse 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils. Look at this. And suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. He told them devils when he cast them out, shut up. Hallelujah. Just get out of here and shut up. Amen. He did not want them to identify him. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Because you know what? The worst thing that could have happened to his ministry was being glorified by a devil. Hallelujah. So he told them, get out and shut up. But, but they knew who he was. Amen. All right. Jesus was there when Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Luke 10 and 18. And he said, and then I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Notice, though, the devil chose a time when Jesus was physically weak and hungry to do what? To attack his identity. Now, who are you? Who are you in the Holy Ghost? You're not the same as you used to be. Amen. God came in. He filled you with his spirit. He changed everything. You don't have the same old habits. Thank God. Amen. You don't smell the same old way. Thank God. Amen. You don't belch beer no more. Hallelujah. You don't smell like cigar smoke anymore. You know what happened? He said, I'm going to make a new creature out of you. And when he came into you, that transformation happened. Hallelujah. Uh, he took the, oh, come on, listen to me a minute. When, when you were in the world, amen, it was a constant battle. You know, the rent's due on Monday and, and, and I'm all down in the dumps because I don't have quite enough money to pay the rent. So what did I do? I go to the bar and get drunk. And now I sure don't have the money to pay the rent. And now my landlord's going to be mad at me. He might want to kick me out. And then the problem will get worse because, you know, we don't have a place to go. If I get kicked out, you know how that goes. And so I'm going to be on the street under a bridge somewhere. And then I feel sorry for myself, so I'll go get some more beer and get drunk again. Hallelujah. It's a vicious cycle in the world. Amen. But... God takes us out of that because that was what identified us back there. Hallelujah. Everybody in the bar knew who you were. But you know what? God changed your identity. Now everybody in the church knows who you are. And if you work in the jail ministry, everybody in the jail knows who we are. Hallelujah. Amen. So... You understand something tonight. God has changed your identity. But the devil would love to make your identity be something else. Amen. He would love to destroy that identity. Amen. Now. All right. So the devil will attack your identity when you are weak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you hold to the scripture, the scripture says that when I am weak, it's then that I am strong. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm no longer fighting and carrying me. Now I've got somebody else that's carrying me. Hallelujah. Remember the story of, of, the, of the footprints in the sand? You know, we're walking along the beach and, and one footprint, set of footprints belongs to the Lord and one set of footprints is mine. And, and we're going down the beach and all of a sudden I look and I only see one set of footprints. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, what's happened? And the Lord said, it was then that I was carrying you. Hallelujah. There's been times in my life, and I know there has been in most all of your lives, amen, that God's had to carry you through some things. Amen. But can I tell you, if he's carrying you, amen, you're going to come out the other side just good. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, all right? Satan does the same with us. He attacks us during a crisis or a spiritual struggle when we're at our weakest and most vulnerable. And then he suggests this. If you were a child of God, this wouldn't be happening. Anybody ever had that? Now, let me tell you what. Right after you get the Holy Ghost... I always tell folks to just get the Holy Ghost this because I want them to have an understanding of what's about to happen. You get the Holy Ghost on Sunday night. Monday morning, the devil comes in and says, you didn't get nothing. That was just a bunch of jibber-jabbers. 
Ah, okay. Well, if he hadn't, if he wasn't concerned about it, he wouldn't come and tell you that garbage. You know why he's concerned? Because you just got rescued. You got your identity changed. Hallelujah. And, and, and he tells you that because he wants you to come back home to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He misses you already. Amen. Uh, he can just keep missing me. Amen. All right. Then he comes on with this. If you're really a Christian, God would be helping you right now. You wouldn't be going through all this. And that's when the poor, poor, pitiful me syndrome kicks in. You know, we get all down the mouth. Poor, poor, pitiful me. I don't know how I got in this shape. Well, I can tell you how. You quit praying. You quit fasting. Now remember last lesson was on fasting. That, that whole lesson was just about fasting and, and the power of fasting. Now, if you're going to ever amount to anything in the spirit, it's going to be after you have learned to push your plate back and to submit yourself unto God. How do you keep your identity? You push your plate back. You submit yourself unto God in prayer and in fasting. Hallelujah. Now, do you have power over all the enemy? No, not, no. Huh? You've got power. You're given power when you get the Holy Ghost. Amen. But guess what? The enemy comes in. He begins to taunt you. He begins to, to try to distract you. He begins to try to pull you aside. You know why? Because he knows if he can distract you, he can destroy you. Amen. He ain't dumb. He's been playing this game a long time. All right. Now, look what happens. Satan plays the game by putting such thoughts in our mind. We need the helmet of salvation firmly in place to withstand such attacks against our identity and God's character which shows through us. Now, God's character shows through you. How does it show through me? In my spirit. If I'm where I should be in the Lord, my spirit is going to reflect His. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we, we call ourselves children of God. And then we get into all kind of mischief. Amen. All right. So look what Peter tells us to do. 1 Peter 1, 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Hello. Amen. He, he said, you need to tie something around your brain. You need to make sure... That you can, and Paul said it this way, I take into captivity every thought. Hallelujah. I've got to guard what goes into my mind. Do you know the mind, that's what we call the heart of God, is, is the mind of the central nervous system that runs through your body. That's the heart of God, of a man. Amen. And when God speaks to the heart of a man, amen, it's because this thing is surrendered to him. Amen. It's not the ticker that's in, surrendered to him. It's this thing up here that's surrendered to him because this is where everything happens at. Okay? This is where uh, you decide to go to a bar at. This is where uh, you decide to do something stupid at. This is where, you know, you know, the last famous last words of a redneck. Hey, y'all, watch this. That happened right here, you know. You don't think about the consequences. You just think about the action. And so what happens is we have to gird up the loins. Gird means to tie a, a, a belt around your... It's like when you're girding up, you're, they have what they call a girdle. The men wore girdles. It wasn't like ladies' things, you know. You didn't see the men out there stretching this, trying to get it on. There was a belt, went around their belt. And they just tied that belt. That was a girdle. They called it girding up whenever you tighten that belt around you. And so he said, gird up your mind. Amen. Literally, that means to tie something around it. Amen. To, to tighten it up. Why do you want to tighten it up? Because I don't want just everything coming through that mind. Amen. I don't want the devil. You know, Benjamin Franklin said it best. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's go further. So. Satan is known as what? The accuser 
of the brethren, Revelation 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ. Look at this. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuse him before our God day and night. Do you know he works 24 hours a day, seven days a week? And he don't even get paid for it. He got hell waiting on him. That's his paycheck. But he works every hour of the day. You know why he does that? Because he wants to destroy as many people who are walking with God as he can. He wants to break your communion with God. All right? Look back at our text. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a physical battle. Although Satan sometimes may attack our physical bodies, remember how he did Job. Amen. This is a war against principalities. The word principalities comes from the Greek, arche, and it means the person or thing that commences, the first person or thing in a series, or the leader. So we're fighting the leaders of darkness. We're coming up against those. All spiritual battles won in the natural are first won in the supernatural. That's why this preacher keeps preaching to you to learn how to pray and to learn how to fast. You know, I, I tell us all the time that we need to pray daily. How many of us pray every day? Nobody raises their hand hardly. You know what? That's kind of crazy in this day and hour because Satan is working overtime. He is rampant. Amen. In this day and age. You know what will happen if you're not praying now? By the time it, the persecution comes and, and, and Satan overcomes America and, and, and persecution begins to happen to the Christians in this, this country. Amen. There won't be too many people who will be bowing their knee and saying, go ahead and shoot me because I'm not giving up God. Amen. You gotta have your mind made up. There gotta be something on the inside of you that says, hey, I am not giving this up. Hallelujah. This is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. Amen. Now, back to our text again. So this is not a physical principality. We are all spiritual battles, one in the natural, first one in the supernatural. Every single nation in the world has a principality over it. In Daniel 10, 13, Daniel spoke of the prince of Persia. In Daniel 10 and 20, Daniel spoke of the prince of Grecia. In 1 Corinthians 15, 32, Paul spoke of fighting the beast of Ephesus. The enemy cannot set up a kingdom over an area unless man has first mapped out that area and has given it a name. There won't be a prince of Persia unless there's a Persia. <laughs> Hallelujah. Makes sense? Amen. I guess you could say, I'm the prince of that desert over there. No, he's the prince of Abilene. He's the prince of, of, of this entire region. Amen. There are regional demons that control this area. And I, I dealt with them several times already since I've been here. Amen. They're, they're, they're demons that, you know, what they, they think they got control, but they have no control. The only control they have is the control we give them. Hallelujah. All right. Now, we need to understand this. Satan is not omnipresent. Uh, we seem to get this picture that Satan's like God. That when he's in Russia tormenting somebody over there, he's here tormenting me. No, he's not. He can only be one place at a time. So what's all this mess that's messing with me? It's his little cohorts. It's all these little demons. And if you saw these guys, in fact... The devil, when the Bible talks about him, says, when you see him, you're going to say, that's the man that caused me all this trouble? Literally, that's what it says. That's it? That's all there is to him? <laughs> when we see him, we're going to be like, I cannot believe that. <laughs> man, he sure does have a big mouth. Amen. All right. So, Powers from this verse, rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, is from the Greek, esousia, referring to Satan's authority over mankind. But remember this, Jesus said this, all right? Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power 
to tread on what? Serpents and scorpions. And over what? All. All of what? All the power of who? Of the enemy. So he's got power, but he don't have power that can affect you. You need to get an understanding of who you really are. If I can ever get this through your head, I can promise you this will be the most powerful church in the area. And probably in the state. Because if you can ever understand that we don't have to listen to a word that idiot spurts out. Amen. We can put him under our feet. Amen. Be do you understand? What, what did that just read? Let me read that again to you. You must not have caught that. Luke 10 and 19. Y'all will be bouncing off the walls with that. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power. All the power of the enemy. Yeah, he's got power, but I've got more power. Hallelujah. Remember that saying we used to have in the 70s? More power to you. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I got it. Mm -hmm. Woo, hallelujah. More power came to me when I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, can I tell you, power came in my life. Amen. When I spoke in another tongue, as the Spirit gave others, power came in my life as I was baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The old man left. The new man stepped in. Oh, hallelujah. And he's full of power. Amen. Uh, then he goes on to say, and nothing. Everybody say nothing. Nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. 2 Timothy 1 7. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. But of power. Wow. So God don't work in fear, does he? He hadn't given you a spirit of fear. So where does the spirit of fear come from if God doesn't give it to you? That's right. That's right. Go figure. <laughs> but look what he said he has given us. But of power. <laughs> and of love makes you love you makes you love your neighbor if it ain't no good. <laughs> Power, love, and what? A sound mind. Amen. Amen. You at least know what you're doing. You know what you're saying. Amen. And you can come against that moron in the name of Jesus, and he understands that you understand what you're saying. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. He understands that you know where the power lies. Amen. It ain't in him. Right. He's got power, but I've got more power. Amen. Hallelujah. And the God I'm serving put that power in me has got even more power than I do. All right. God lets us know how many times in his word it is us, not the devil, who has power. Look at this. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power. Power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So all of these verses are backing up that your identity is an identity of somebody who has more power than the devil. Don't let the devil come and, and whisper in your ear. And, oh, man, I, I, as a pastor, one of, the, one of the things that's always bugged me is when I see people of God who should be on top of the world spiritually... Who are constantly down in the mud, you know, they're in the pit, rattling, rattling, and grappling, and whatever you want to call it, wrestling in the mud. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've never seen a mud wrestler, but I've heard about it. <laughs> Amen. But there's a lot of apostolics that are doing that. They're down in the mud pit with the devil. They're having a wrestling match. No, Jesus never wrestled a single devil. You know what he did? He just pointed his finger at him and said, Come out of her. Or come out of him. You dingbat, that ain't where you belong. You don't live there. Hallelujah. Amen. So we got power. God's word tells us in 2 Corinthians 2 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Hmm. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, he ain't got but three. Hallelujah. 
Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. That's the only three things he's got to play with. But he works as much as he can on us with all three of those things from every angle that he can. Amen. All right. We are not to let Satan get the upper hand on us. We should be spiritual enough to recognize an attack that's being from Satan. We should first recognize when it's a move in the spirit world against us, our family, our home, or our church. That's where the scripture comes in. If you have a Holy Ghost... You should be sensitive enough to the spirit world to recognize the difference between the spirit of God and the voice of God and the spirit of Satan and his voice. Now hopefully by the end of this series of lessons, there will be some folks that have grasped this enough that you can begin to step into the spirit world, into the supernatural. Now, there's people under the sound of my voice here tonight that have done it. They know what it's about. They know how to do it, but you're not doing it. You're going to be held accountable for that. I'm going to be held accountable for that. Amen. So I'm urging you to begin to move forward in the Holy Ghost and step into that realm. All right. Now, secondly, all right, first of all, you've got to recognize the difference between God's voice and Satan's voice. My dad, who was a major prophet, used to say there's a fine line between the voice of the Spirit and the voice of Satan or the voice of the world. And if you're not careful, if you really haven't prayed like you should, if you haven't fasted and got your flesh under control, your flesh may want to step over that line a little bit because you feel like you've got to tell them something. You know, you got to perform. That's not, this is not about performance, okay? This is about following God's voice and knowing his voice. All right. All right. Secondly, we should refuse what the devil first. Okay. First off, we're going to recognize when it's a move of the spirit world against us, our family, our home, and our church. All right. We're going to recognize that. So first, you've got to recognize when Satan's coming against you. Secondly, we should refuse what the devil's trying to put into our lives. We should refuse hurt. One of the worst spirits that can get into you in the church is being hurt. Yes, sir. That's for sure. You know, you ever see people would go around with a chip on their shoulder? Yes, or they get their feelings stuck out? You ever see them? Okay. You ever seen them with big old grasshoppers? They got them big old feelers stick out front. You know? Big old feeler things that come off their head. You know? You know, they look weird, but they can feel every little thing with those things. And, and sometimes folks come to church, to the house of God, and they've got all this stuff coming out of their head. Can't see it, but can I tell you, amen, they're sensitive. Bless their heart. Bless your heart. You know what that is? world's smallest record player playing my heart bleeds for you. That's what God thinks. <coughs> Ridiculous. For a Christian, a Holy Ghost feel saint of God to get hurt over anything in the church, over some, somebody say, oh, they hurt my feelings. Get your feelings out of the way. They won't step on your toes if your toes aren't in the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I learned a long time ago, uh, who was it? Was it Amanda or Sandy? One of our two daughters, and I was sitting, she was sitting in the pew box one night. She's probably 15, 14 years old, something. The Holy Ghost got to move, and she got to shouting. I'm standing there worshiping God, and I'm not paying attention to them high heels until one of them hit me in the top of the foot. Then I wasn't worshiping God anymore. I was sitting down trying to dig a high heel out of my foot. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I hadn't had my feet in the way, I wouldn't have stepped on. Lesson learned. Amen. Spiritually, same thing. God is not interested in you or me getting hurt over every little thing that happens. Amen. Now, can I, can I explain something to you? I want to explain this to everybody. Sometimes the preaching of the word is going to hurt your feelings. 
You know why it's going to, that's what it's supposed to do. You know why? It's because there's a conflict there with the Word of God and the Spirit of God with what's going on on the inside of you and what you're, what you're accepting and what you're allowing to be in there. Now, it can be something in your spirit. Amen. It can be something in your life. Amen. But whatever it is, you do not I need to, we, we need to refuse being hurt. I'll just, you cannot say enough stuff to me to hurt me. Amen. We should refuse to get angry. Well, Jesus got angry. Yeah, but he got angry for a good reason. Because they were profaning his house. They were profaning the house of God. They were making a merchandise place out of it. That's why we don't sell stuff in our lobby or in our church. Amen. We just don't do that. We did it. We let one guy come in here one time and he did it. And I said, that's the end of that. We're not doing that no more. Amen. We, we don't, I don't believe in that. We don't have to make a merchandise out of the house of God. So that's why he got mad. He's like, You're, this is my house. This is a house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. And he took him and planted him a whip out of a rope. And he did a little whooping. <laughs> Amen. You ever been whipped by God? Those people he did. Amen. They got whipped by God. All right. Now, so we refuse to get angry. We should refuse to let anything get in our spirit. You know, we don't have too much trouble with this anymore. Back, back in the day, back years ago, uh, there used to be a thing called party lines. Anybody ever heard of a party line? It wasn't a, it wasn't a hangout where you had a parties, okay? <laughs> it was a telephone line that ran through the community. And rather than you having your own private line, you had a line that was on that line. But your next door neighbor had that same line, and the one down the street from him had that line, and on both sides of the road all the way down, they had that same line. And so when the phone would ring, you'd pick it up because it would be your ring. Your ring might be two shorts and a long. And you'd pick up your ring, and probably about the time you said hello, you'd hear the phone pick up. And it was Mabel down the way. Wondering, yeah, hello, hello. Except Mabel wouldn't say nothing. You know what she'd do? She'd just sit there and breathe in the phone. <laughs> and you're just trying to talk, and, and you know she's listening, so you're being careful because you don't want to say something that she might take in the community and spread it around about you, you know. But we have party lines in, in, in the church. We have party lines. You know, we, we talked a while back about cliques. We don't do cliques here. I'm sorry. This church, we don't do cliques. I never have like cliques, so we don't do that. But we don't do party lines either. Amen. No, you know, hey, I, you know why, uh, Sister So and So? Did you see her the other night? No, don't worry about Sister So and So. Leave that in the pastor's hands. He'll worry about that. Amen. He's, that's why he's pastoring or not. All right, now let's go a little further. I'm trying to get through here. Thirdly, we should rebuke the enemy who's come to destroy us. Fourth, we should resist the enemy. In order to resist the enemy, one has to have on the full armor of God. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. All right, let's go on and look at this. The word withstand here and the word stand are two different words with very different meanings. The word withstand, he said, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That means to set oneself against, to withstand, to resist, to oppose. He said, you're going to have to oppose those spirits in the evil day. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you don't understand what's going on in America right now. I, I've been watching all this stuff and I've been thinking, you know what? Satan's at work. You know why Satan's at work? They put Archibald in Washington, D.C., not too far from the White House here a couple of years ago. There's another uh, uh, statue of Maphomet, amen, somewhere in the U.S., and, and they're just on courthouse lawns. They took down the Ten Commandments and put up a statue of Maphomet. You know what they're doing? Amen. They're giving this nation to Satan. They're pulling it away from God and giving it to Satan. That ain't going to work too well. I've got news for you. That's not going to happen to be a good thing. Amen. So, we have to resist the enemy. Amen. 
All right, so withstand means to set oneself against, to withstand, to resist, or oppose. The word stand in this scripture means to be ready or prepared, to be of a steadfast mind, one who does not hesitate or does not waver. You ever see wishy-washy Christians? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. They're like... You know, the laundry on the clothesline on a windy day. They blow it whichever way the wind blows. They're wishy-washy. They don't really have a commitment to God. Amen. Their commitment is kind of sort of to God, but yet it's more to their own, their own lust and their own desires. Amen. We need to have our commitment strictly to God. Amen. If you're committed to God and to His Spirit, Amen. And to his word, hallelujah. Can I tell you what's going to happen when you make that commitment to him? He's going to be committed to you. Well, I really think I want him committed to me. You know why? Because the Bible tells me that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. It says that the angels of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him. So by me committing myself to him, I'm showing him that I fear him. I respect him. In other words, I have a high respect for God and his things. And because I've got that respect for God, I've got that love for God, he has a, a, a commitment to me. Hallelujah. He said, I'll bear you up. Amen. I'll bear you up. So you dash your foot against the stone. Don't worry about it. There's angels going to catch you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, to word stand means to be ready or be prepared. We've got to be prepared. Amen. We don't need to be one of these that is wishy-washy, wavering Christians. Amen. All right. Just as Chuck Yeager broke through the invisible sound barrier that day to enter a world of peaceful solitude so we can leave behind the invisible barrier Satan and his cohorts has put up to keep us from soaring above what we deem ourselves able. Okay, up to the point where Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier, man could only fly so fast. Now... We've got jets, every jet on this on this runway out here at, at Dice, if they're running, every one of them can break the sound barrier. They just can't do it below 10,000 feet. They've got to find and make it their license pool. But they can break the sound barrier. I, 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 we used to live in the country down in Bonwer and uh, the Air Force Base in Alexandria. The fighter jets would come over our house and they would do dog fights and all this kind of crazy stuff. And we had some A-10 warthogs that would fly over. And I, I like to sit there and watch them do their, their, their war games and, and do their dog fights and things. And then we lived on Blue Lake Bottom, my wife and I did. We lived on a little lake way down in the woods, way away from everybody else. And it was way down in the woods. And that, that little lake there, we are out there fishing one day and looked up. We heard some, some F-16s and I looked up and here they're coming straight down towards the lake. We were their target. Oh, yeah. For about three minutes and then i was off the lake and uh i could target it all they want to but one of the things that used to irritate us back when i was just a kid growing up would be those jets would come over the woods so low and they would break the sound barrier and many many times people had their windows broken out because when they broke the sound barrier they were too low and, but but there's something about it when that jet breaks that sound barrier. Now they've got pictures of it. it they never had had pictures before, but recently there were some pictures came out, and it shows jets when they're breaking the sound barrier. There's like a mist going, like a big round circle of mist going around that plane when it goes through that barrier. Amen. But once it gets to the other side, I was talking to a pilot at the base, off the base here one day, and. Uh, he was flying the B-1s, and he was telling me, I said, have you ever, how fast that thing will go? He said, oh, a little over Mach 2. I said, you ever been there? He said, nah, been to Mach 1 and a half. Well, hello. That's pretty fast. Amen. And so we got to talking about it, and I, I asked him the question. I said, 
what does it feel like when you go through the sound barrier? He said, it, it's so cool. He said, you'll be going along and you'll be you'll be pushing that plane for all it's worth. And man, them engines, you can hear the roar of the engines and all that stuff. And man, it's loud and it's noisy. And all of a sudden, you go through that sound barrier and instantaneously, you're ahead of your sound. You can't even hear the sound of the engines. He said, it's so neat. It's so cool. And I want us to understand that God is trying to get us individually and as a church, amen, to move forward spiritually to the point that we break through the invisible wall that's been holding us back. Because there's an invisible wall that we don't see. God sees it. We don't. But God, through through teaching of the word and also through the ministry of, of Brother Talbert have been trying to push this church through that invisible wall. Amen. If we keep praying and fasting, how many of us are fasting every week? I've asked us to fast every week, at least one day a week. Amen. Really, you can fast one day a week as long as you do it consistently. Fasting is one of those things that you've got to be consistent with. If you fast one day a week, every week, you know what you're going to do? You're going to be consistent enough that you're going to build up your spirit, man. Hallelujah. It's going to begin to build up something spiritually on the inside of you. And you're going to be overcoming things you never thought you could overcome. You're going to be moving into realms of the spirit that you would never have moved into before. Amen. So anyway, we're moving that way. We want to get past this barrier. When Chuck Yeager broke that sound barrier, that barrier that had held back everybody up to that point was now behind them. And then they took what, he, what they learned off of that flight and it began to be everybody does it now. You know, back then it was just one body. Now it's everybody. Amen. They've even had, they've even had uh, commercial airliners that broke the sound barrier. Not any I've been on, thank God. Amen. But there have been, uh, you remember the Concorde used to fly from France over here? It would break the sound barrier by the time it left the airport good. Amen. You know what? we got to get beyond ourselves and where we're at. And let God, amen, open the door for us in the realm of the Spirit and move us through. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Others have gone before us who have achieved great things in the Spirit, just as Chuck established the fact that piercing the sound barrier was achievable. They have paved the way for us in this generation to reach beyond man's limits into the spirit world, achieving what many want, but what few can attain. Hallelujah. Amen. Many are called, few are chosen. Ever hear that scripture? Amen. God chose you. You weren't just called, you were chosen. Who are the called? All these folks in all these other churches around here that aren't chosen, amen. You you have been chosen. God placed his hand on you and moved you into a, a place where the spirit can move in you and can talk to you and can use you. Hallelujah. He can fill you. He did. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. When he came in, you changed. Now you're a new creature. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Hallelujah. God didn't fill you with his spirit to sit on the fence with the chickens. You know, we've been happy to sit in the chicken yard too long. I, I imagine this. This is my imagination. I don't know. You know, my, my wife's chickens, they don't know. They just look at the ground. All they're doing is looking for bugs and food. Yeah. Always looking at the ground. But that eagle, he's soaring up above them. I didn't see a one of them chickens look up. You know, they didn't have any aspirations to soar with eagles. They're chicken. They just wanted to stay in the chicken yard and eat. So I guess they'll do it. Amen. But I'll, I'm not. I'm not satisfied with staying in the chicken yard in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to soar. Don't you? Let's stand and let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. Let's worship Him. Come on. Let's give Him glory. Let's magnify Him. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your presence. The Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise. We magnify you, O oh Lord. My God, we give you glory. We praise your name, Lord. You are worthy, O oh God. 
Lord, we magnify you. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Don't forget the announcements. Uh, Wednesday night, there will be no prayer. Thursday, 645, men and women at the jail. Amen. If you're registered, if you're signed up, amen. If you've already been through uh, your safety classes and all that good stuff, you can go in. Otherwise, you can't yet. Amen. We've got several people that are registering. And hallelujah. There you go. That's what it looks like from an eagle's point of view. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to soar? Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. He ain't worried about nothing. He's just going. Amen. That's a golden eagle. That's not a uh, bald eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. But he's still way up there above everything. Amen. I want to do that in the spirit, don't you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Andrew. All right, so please remember, amen, no church family prayer. And we will have the jail ministry, men's and women's, amen, right? Men's and women's on Thursday. I need Sister Wiley 